A Lesson in Burning History A Tale from the Pax Humana Sunlight, filtered through stained glass depicting astronauts on their first ventures beyond Earth, cast a dappled mosaic across the worn oak floorboards of the university lecture hall. A low murmur hung in the air, punctuated by the occasional rustle of worn textbooks or the click of a data pad. Students, a diverse group of young humans from various corners of the Terran Alliance, drifted in and out, filling the high-backed wooden chairs. At the front of the room, beneath a portrait of a man in a crisp military uniform, his face etched with the stern determination of a wartime leader, Professor Alastair Sinclair adjusted his spectacles. His impeccably tailored suit, a charcoal gray that spoke of both authority and elegance, sat comfortably on his wiry frame. Silver strands, neatly combed back, framed his face, etched with the lines of a life devoted to scholarship. His sapphire cufflinks, a glint of blue catching the sunlight, hinted at a lineage steeped in history. Professor Sinclair, a man known as much for his erudition as for his dry wit, surveyed the gathering with an air of patient anticipation. He cleared his throat, the sound echoing softly in the stillness. Welcome, class, he began, his voice a rich baritone seasoned with the lilt of his native Irish accent. Today, we embark on a journey through the ashes of a lost utopia, the Pax Humana. A hush fell over the assembly room as Professor Sinclair's words resonated. The murmur that had filled the air moments before had been replaced by a collective intake of breath. The Pax Humana, a name whispered in hushed tones and debated in hushed classrooms, was a subject both alluring and unsettling. Among the students, a young human woman named Anya furrowed her brow in concentration, adjusting the visual interface embedded in her temple. Beside her sat Derek, a hulking man with a thick beard and a shaved head. His broad shoulders strained against his worn leather jacket. Derek, a veteran of several border skirmishes, had a deep distrust of treaties and a preference for a strong military. The whispers of appeasement during the Pax Humana rubbed him the wrong way. Across the room, Sarah and Emily, twins with bright blue eyes and hair pulled back in tight braids, exchanged a worried glance. Their family, devout followers of a pacifistic religious order, had benefited greatly from the Pax Humana. The idea of a return to war terrified them. Professor Sinclair, sensing the tension in the room, allowed the weight of his words to hang for a moment longer. Then, with a gentle smile, he began, the Pax Humana, an ambitious experiment in galactic unity forged from the ashes of a devastating war. A thousand years of enforced peace, an ideal both noble and controversial. He gestured towards a holographic display at the front of the room, where a detailed map of the galaxy flickered to life. Imagine, if you will, he continued, his voice weaving a tapestry of history, a time before the Pax Humana. A time where interstellar travel meant venturing into a lawless frontier, where every encounter with an unknown species could be a prelude to conflict. Professor Sinclair's voice, smooth and articulate, transported the students back to a tumultuous era. He spoke of battles fought on distant star systems of civilizations reduced to rubble, and of a fear that permeated the very fabric of galactic society. He described the rise of a human leader, a visionary who dared to dream of a different future, one where dialogue replaced destruction, and cooperation flourished instead of bloodshed. As Professor Sinclair delved deeper, the assembly room became a portal to a bygone era. The students, captivated by his narrative, leaned forward in their seats, their faces a mixture of fascination and horror. The Pax Humana, once a dusty entry in a history textbook, was coming alive, its triumphs and failures unfolding before their very eyes. Professor Sinclair paused, his gaze sweeping across his rapt audience. Now, he said, his voice dropping to a lower register, let us delve into the cracks that began to show in this seemingly monolithic piece. A holographic image flickered to life, depicting a news broadcast from a bygone era. A flamboyant news anchor, with a perfectly sculpted smile and a voice dripping with forced optimism, spoke of fruitful cultural exchanges and the dawning of a new era of galactic understanding. Professor Sinclair chuckled, a dry rasp that echoed in the room. This, my friends, he said, gesturing towards the display, is where the seeds of discord were sown. 
the Pax Humana, a treaty forged in the fires of war, was slowly being rewritten in the sanitizers of political correctness. He cleared his throat. The original treaty, he continued, his voice firm, was a blunt instrument. It spoke not of cultural exchange picnics, but of a stark choice peace or death. It was a powerful truth, one that served as a constant reminder of the terrible cost of conflict. Anya, the red-haired student, leaned forward, her brow furrowed in thought. Derek, his jaw clenched, let out a low growl that echoed in the room. Sarah and Emily exchanged a worried glance, their bright blue eyes filled with concern. But the narrative, Professor Sinclair pressed on, began to shift. Politicians, eager to appease their constituents and appear diplomatic, downplayed the threat, the necessity for a strong military presence to enforce the treaty's terms. The image on the holographic display changed, now showing a series of lavish galas and conferences, where human diplomats and alien dignitaries mingled with forced smiles. Defense budgets were slashed, Professor Sinclair explained, the military deemed an unnecessary relic of a bygone era. The message of strength was replaced by empty gestures of appeasement. A student with a neatly trimmed beard raised his hand. Professor, he interjected, but wouldn't that lead to peace? Is that not the ultimate goal? Professor Sinclair nodded. Indeed, peace is a noble ambition. But peace secured by ignoring threats is a fragile peace at best. He tapped the holographic display, bringing up a map of the galaxy, with several star systems blinking red. Within three hundred years of the Pax Humanus collapse, he said, his voice heavy, the galaxy erupted in the most brutal conflict it had ever witnessed. Dozens of species were wiped from existence, entire civilizations reduced to dust. The message of peace at any cost had emboldened the most belligerent species, while leaving the former signatories woefully unprepared. The weight of his words filled the room. Anya, Zylo, the avian twins, all were silently contemplating the tragic consequences of a sanitized truth. The Pax Humana, Professor Sinclair had shown them, wasn't just a lost utopia, it was a stark reminder of the consequences of ignoring the realities of a harsh, unforgiving universe. The lecture had just begun, but its message was already clear, true peace, as with all things worthwhile, demanded a price, vigilance, strength, and a willingness to face uncomfortable truths. Professor Sinclair adjusted his spectacles, the glint of the data pad reflecting in his sapphire cufflinks. The erosion of the Pax Humana, he began, his voice a measured baritone, began with a whisper, not a bang. It started not with battleships, but with bureaucrats and news anchors. He tapped the holographic display, revealing a news broadcast from a bygone era. A man with a perfectly sculpted smile spoke in a saccharine tone, and with the signing of the historic Unity Accord, a new chapter of peace and cooperation dawns for the galaxy. Gone was the stark, yet necessary, mantra of the Pax Humana, Professor Sinclair continued, his voice laced with a hint of bitterness. Peace or death, a phrase that held a brutal truth, a constant reminder of the consequences of conflict. Replaced, he gestured towards the display, with a rhythmic, feel-good mantra, united in peace. Anya scribbled furiously in her data pad. Derek let out a low scoff, shaking his head in disapproval. Sarah and Emily huddled closer, their eyes wide with worry. The message, Professor Sinclair explained, slowly seeped into the public consciousness. Institutions named after Admiral Corvus Thane, the architect of the Pax Humana, were quietly renamed at first. Then, with a fanfare of supposed inclusivity, they were dismantled altogether. He gestured again, and the holographic display flickered to life with images of protesters storming a building, their faces contorted in righteous anger. Chants of down with the symbols of oppression filled the virtual space. Those who dared speak of the Pax Humanus' original message, Professor Sinclair continued, his voice growing steely, were ostracized. Labeled terrorists, racial supremacists, relics of a bygone era. Some, he lowered his voice to a chilling. Whisper, faced imprisonment. Others. He paused, letting the silence hang heavy in the air, were subjected to a far more insidious fate, their minds subtly reshaped through mind-altering technology. A collective gasp rippled through the assembly room. 
Anya gasped, a hand flying to her mouth. Derek's fists clenched at his sides, his jaw set tight. Sarah and Emily, tears welling in their eyes, exchanged a terrified look. Professor Sinclair's gaze swept across the stunned faces before him. This, my students, he concluded, his voice ringing with a quiet fury, is the true cost of forgetting the truth. The Pax Humana wasn't just a treaty, it was a pact forged in the fires of war, a constant reminder of the price of peace. By erasing its core message, they paved the way for the very conflict it sought to prevent. The weight of history hung heavy in the air. The Pax Humana, Professor Sinclair had shown them, wasn't just a cautionary tale, it was a stark reminder of the insidiousness of revisionism, and the danger of burying uncomfortable truths in a comfortable blanket of political correctness. The students, their faces etched with a newfound understanding of the past, filed out of the assembly room, carrying with them the echoes of a forgotten warning, peace or death. What these students were yet to realize is these dark messages were only the soft introduction to a history steeped in blood. We here at Bone Spears and Starships would like to thank you for enjoying a lesson in burning history, a tale from the Pax Humana. We would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe and if you have any suggestions for stories in this world or any of our others feel free to write them in the description or join our Discord.